Hey there! Thanks for stopping by to hear some thoughts from a dizzy dude. I'm Adam Tilted. Today, I want to talk about something. I've been wanting to talk about this for a long time. I get a lot of parents that ask me about science experiments for their kids. You know, what kind of experiments can I do with my kids at home? Simple, fun, well, teach them some science. I've looked online to see what's available there, and what I find is that most of what is offered up as an experiment is actually a demonstration. We are going to look at the difference. Demonstrations versus experiments. Experiments. A demonstration is when I show you something, and it might teach you something about science, but it's because I explain to you what happened. An experiment is when you, you do testing in different situations to try to answer a question that you don't know the answer to, all right? Now, to help you understand the difference, we're going, I'm going to do an, a demonstration, and I'm going to do an experiment. First, a demonstration. By the way, kids, if you want to do this demonstration at home, please get your parents to help you, because it involves fire. Okay? Uh, here's what I've got. I've got a water bottle. I have a hard-boiled egg that fits on top of the water bottle. I have a post-it note. I'm going to light the post-it note on fire and put it inside the water bottle. And we're gonna see what happens. All right, here we go. Lighting the post-it note on fire, dropping it into the water bottle and putting... <gasps> Did you see that? The egg just totally got sucked into the bottle. It just... Now, yeah, now the key is, Bobby, is to find the right size opening, and that's kind of hard to do. I'll tell you what has the perfect, it's the perfect container for this, is those pre-made Starbucks Frappuccino things that come in the little jar, the jars that, that you can get. Those are perfect because they have just the right size opening and they're glass. I mean, I've completely ruined this water bottle by basically catching it on fire. But those, you can reuse them over and over again because they're glass. So this was a demonstration. I could tell you why. First of all, do you have, do you have a guess as to what happened there? Why did the egg go into the bottle? If I tell you the answer, then this is a demonstration. And it's a, it's a good demonstration. I mean, it, it really was impactful, right? People will remember that. If I make you try to figure out why for yourself, then you will have to design an experiment. I'm going to tell you why this happened because I'm going to do a different experiment. Here are some guesses. Bob, he says, um, because the fire killed the oxygen. And so that sucked in the egg. Okay, that's a good guess. That's actually not what happened, though. Oh, it creates a vacuum. Okay, you're getting closer. It creates a vacuum, but not because anything burned, like the oxygen burning, that did not do it. What happened was, when I put the burning post-it note inside here, and then I capped it with the egg, that heated up the air inside the water bottle. And when air gets hot, it expands. And so what happened was is it pushed the egg up just a little bit and a little bit of air vented out. Okay? Now you wouldn't have noticed if you weren't looking for it, but if you do this yourself, pay attention because you'll see it. It'll go. And then after the air had vented out, the air inside the water bottle cooled down because the fire went out. Cool air takes up less space. That's what sucked in the egg because it created a vacuum. There was not enough air to fill up the space. That's basically what a vacuum is. Cool demonstration you can do with your kids. But that's a demonstration. That's not an experiment. Here's an experiment. I've got this nifty guy. First of all, what the heck is this? This is a barometer which measures air pressure. And the way it works is that the air up here in the top of the globe, that is trapped in there by the water. It is at whatever pressure the room temperature air was when I filled this. Changes in pressure outside of this 
don't affect the pressure in here. But it has an opening. So this little tube goes up to the top. The air pressure outside is pushing down, just like it pushes down on all of us, it pushes down on the fluid. If the pressure uh, outside is stronger or higher pressure than the pressure inside, then this will be lower. If, the, if it, they're equal, it'll be balanced. Okay, but if there's high pressure outside, it'll push this further, further, further down. If there's low pressure outside, then this will get pushed up by the pressure that's inside the trapped part. That's how it works. Now, here is the experiment part. I want you to watch what happens when I put my hand on, watch the tube when I put my hand on here. Can you see what's happening? Well, see that liquid in the tube is gradually, it's going up. It's going up. Now, how, how can that be? That means that the pressure inside here is increasing somehow. For some reason, it's push because it's pushing the water up. Any guesses on what did that? This is where we would design an experiment to try to find out. We make some guesses. What do we think caused this to go up? Any ideas? I have some ideas. When I put my hand on here, it increased the pressure inside here and made the liquid go up. Why? Why did my hand on here change the pressure inside? <laughs> oh, I have magic hands. Let's see, you're funny. I'm going to guess, this is my guess for my experiment, I'm going to guess that it has something to do with the temperature because when I put my hand on here, it's warming up what's inside. Now, I want to test that. It would make sense that if that's the case, then the opposite would be true, right? If it got colder, then the, the tube would go down. So I've got some ice. So we're going to put that on there and see what happens. Yeah. It's going down. That is a clue that we're on the right track, but it doesn't prove it because I also introduced water into the equation because the ice, right? I didn't, when I put my hand on there, I didn't have water on my hands. So it could be the water that made it go down. I don't know. Try using water that is, is warm and see what happens. Now, what would you expect to happen? If we're on the right track and I put warm water on here, what would you predict is going to happen? There it goes. So that did the same thing as when my hand was on there. It increased the pressure inside and pushed the water up the stem. The ice decreased the pressure and sucked the water back down the stem. We can draw a conclusion from that. We can say that based on the data that we have observed, we think that air pressure is affected by temperature. The higher the temperature, the higher the air pressure. The lower the temperature, the lower the air pressure, because that's what we observe. That's the basics of an experiment. First thing you do is you have a question. Why does the th why does the liquid go up and down? Then I make a prediction. I think it's because it has something to do with the, my hand warming it up. Then I design an experiment. So I tried warm, cold. I thought about all the other variables that might be involved, like the water. Then I collected some data. I did the experiment and I saw, I saw what happened. And um, normally in a, an experiment, you would do it over and over again and write it down to make sure that it happens the same way every time because a lot of times it doesn't and that brings up more questions. And then once we've collected all that data, we analyze it, we look at it all and we draw a conclusion. We say based on the data we collected in this experiment, this is what we think. Then the scientific community out there can look at, at your experiment and say, well, I don't agree. Thank you, Bobby. I don't agree with your conclusion. But then it's up to them to design an experiment that shows that my conclusion is wrong. And that's the great thing about science because that's how we learn. Science is a self-correcting process because the purpose is to prove other scientists wrong. That's how we make discoveries because as soon as nobody can prove you wrong, then then we're like, okay, well, I guess that's I guess that's the way it is. 
until someone can prove this wrong, we will accept the fact that the the temperature and the air pressure are related. It's up to anyone to challenge that to design an experiment that shows it otherwise. You, so when you go online and look for science experiments, you're going to see a lot of demonstrations. A volcano, a, you know, mix this and that and it, whatever. Those are cool if you know why it happens and can explain it. But it's better if you can look at those demonstrations and try to develop it into an experiment. So instead of just looking at it and being amazed, ask a question. Make a prediction and see if you can find a way to make see if your prediction is correct that's an experiment that is science that is the beauty of the scientific method thank you for stopping in today this was really fun i am going to be doing more experiments if you have questions about conducting experiments at home leave them in the comments or if you have suggestions for experiments that you would like to see me perform, leave those in the comments, or you can send me messages as well. In the meantime, have a great day, and I will see you soon.